You're listening to Unfiltered with Muhammad Uncut, a podcast about personal growth and authentic leadership. If you're looking for tips on how to manage others, get ahead, and make your way up the corporate ladder, this is not the show for you. This podcast is about being of service to others, leading from the heart, and evolving into a better version of yourself. Each episode brings you motivated stories about unfiltered leadership and authentic leaders, those who involve others, use their influence to amplify diverse perspectives, and inspire teams to achieve collective results. If this sounds like you, keep listening. Welcome to the Unfiltered Podcast. I have with me an incredibly unfiltered leader today, someone who is making a difference with the movement that she and her husband are working together on. I have Ali McGuire. Good afternoon. Good morning to you, Ali. How are you? Uh, thank you. Good morning to you. We're doing well here, for sure. Thank you very much for being my guest today. I look forward to learning more about the wonderful changes that you're bringing to your community, but also worldwide. And I'm going to talk about that. Both you and Jack are the founders of an organization called Awareness Ties. This is an organization that has as its mission to support social change by elevating awareness and providing sustainable resources for positive social impact. Through your magazine, your events, your campaigns, you raise awareness for causes and support for nonprofits. Both you and Jack believe in a strong commitment to give more than you get. So you've dedicated yourselves to building a company of integrity with passion and purpose to serve others. You want to show each other and your six children, God bless you and your six children, the commitment to better living through better giving. And you also want to educate and empower others to be the change that they want to see in the world. And when I read about you, when I heard about you, I knew I had to get you to be a guest on here. I will also tell you when I watched your video, you know, on your website, Awareness Ties, you say, before you go any further and you learn about our ambassadors, stop and watch this video. And I, I'm getting goosebumps just through calling it. I, I was in tears. Oh. So I, be, you know, oh, I, I believe in change and I believe in unity and I believe in celebrating our diversity. Diversity is a fact that inclusion is a choice and what you're doing, you're choosing to, to celebrate that diversity and to create inclusion by giving a voice to mm. everyone. So yeah. congratulations yeah. and kudos and blessings and whatever positive energy I can send your way. I'm doing that right now because you are taking the dream. When Martin Luther King says, I have a dream, 60 years ahead, he's looking to what your organization is doing to the community. And that dream is becoming a reality. And at no time other than the present have we felt the amplification of the voices that have been silenced for so long, mm -hmm. heard like they're being heard now. And I want to turn to you, Ali, and ask you, why were you inspired to amplify these voices even further? You know, uh, because I think that they are needed, needed to be heard. Um, certainly, personally, Jack and I are, are both um, tethered to this cause and to this mission, but we feel like beyond ourselves that we are part of something so much bigger than us. And we felt responsible for if we saw the change that needed to happen, it was our duty to serve um, that mission and to serve that cause. And so, you know, we both dedicated ourselves, our lives to being that change that we would like to see, that change that we would like to support. Um, the, the video that you referenced on our website um, and thank you for taking the time, the intermission, as it were, on our uh, homepage to, to listen and to watch. And that poem, Let America Be America Again by Langston Hughes, such a beautiful piece. And I felt so honored just to narrate that and to use my voice to support his and to support the voices of so many that, as you were saying, for too long have gone unheard. And, um, you know, we believe that through conversation, there is a cure that can be found. We feel like 
legislature alone, policies alone, are not going to cut it. That there has to be a change from within. It cannot be these external forces that are forcing a change. It has to be an internal change that is allowed and not forced. And we feel like to do that, it is through the content that we are able to um, curate and also the conversations that we were able to have and to inspire um, others to have as well. You know, Ali, I don't think we should underplay the importance that you narrated that poem. And, you know, I didn't know that till I was reading the, uh, the captions at the end, you know, poem narrated by Ali. Uh, your middle name is Mc McCurrick? Uh, uh, so Ali Merrick McGuire. Yeah. Merrick Mc <laughs> McGuire. I want to make sure I don't want to misrepresent you to, to the listeners. So thank you. But when I, I saw that, I was inspired because you, your voice was captivating. And this wasn't just you reading a poem. You were living, feeling, allowing us to experience it with you. And the power of those words and the resonance that you provided that's why I got the goosebumps. That's why the tears swelled in my eyes because many times we rally behind a cause and not being part of the cause. Mm -hmm. You and Jack have decided to be the fabric that unites these different causes together. And I, I thought about it. I, you know, I kept asking myself, well, wait a minute, there's a lot of disparity here. There's, they're all over the place. They've got all these different causes. And I thought, right. but that's what it's about. <laughs> right? You know what? what I'm, so, I'm so glad that you're bringing that up, Muhammad, because, you know, and Jack and I, we had other people, we've had a number of people. Um, I mean, all of our work has um, been so well received um, by so many. However, we have had that pushback to say, you know what, you guys, 21 and now 22, 22 yeah. causes, you guys, like you're saying, you're all over the board. Like, what's, like, what's the common thread? And we said, you know what? We're all tied to a cause. Think about yourself for a moment, even. Um, how many causes are you tied to? I know Jack, um, of all the causes that we represent, there are probably eight or nine that he's very closely tied to. Myself, probably six or seven that I feel super passionate about and super um, tied to. And so with awareness ties, we want to just say, you know, we're all tied to a cause. What's yours? What awareness ties is, is not meant to be, hey, we're going to give you everything you need to know about breast cancer we're going to give you everything you need to know about multiple sclerosis or about domestic violence, about any of these things. What we're going to do is we're going to say, you might not know where to start. You can start here. We are going to give you the resources, access to the resources to dig deeper, to get deeper. If you think about, um, you know, think about awareness ties as a platform, as being a stage, right? So we built this stage for causes to be seen, for nonprofits to be heard. Um, you know, when we first got into this, we said, well, where is our fit in this whole space? We said, there are so many nonprofits out there who are doing amazing things, doing amazing work. Where do we fit into all of that? And we thought, as, a po as opposed to being one of those who is going and doing, maybe what we are is the stage for them to be seen, for them to be heard, and for us to really be a support um, for the work that they're doing. And so to provide that sort of support, to be that gateway for people to access these nonprofits, to access these causes, we built Awareness Ties. And on that stage exists our magazine, which is a monthly publication where you can learn um, about these different causes through different uh, interviews and personal stories. Um, in this magazine, you're going to um, have this interactive content with videos and all the kinds of things where you can really engage with the content. We partnered with Issue, and they offer us this platform to publish the content, um, again, making it interactive, uh, where you can click and touch things and experience things right there in the publication and um, easily share from there. So to be able to not just consume content, but to be able to experience content. We feel very fortunate and very blessed with that partnership um, that we're able to engage through this content in such a powerful, unique way. Um, in addition to that magazine, we do have our guides, uh, which if you think about those, think about them like a set of encyclopedias, right? And so there are all these different volumes. And so there's a, a volume for each of the causes that we represent. 
that again, just really serves as an online resource guide um, that gives some information and resources about where you go to get the help or to give the help that, that you're looking for. And in a um, moment, I would like to ask, so go, can, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just going to say the third part of that is something we're going to be introducing. So, you know, we have these, uh, this magazine, this monthly magazine, we have these guides for getting um, help. We also are going to be introducing an event series, an online event series called Awareness Talks. And that's where there's an actual dynamic conversation going on with live events where the conversation is actually being curated and captured where we can record it and create a library of content that way. Right. So. And I, I want to come to the point of the number of causes and how you choose a cause and what becomes part of your repertoire. But before I go there, I, I, as a user, as somebody who's just been introduced to Awareness Ties, and for people who are listening, Awareness Ties came into existence in 2020, didn't it? So uh, 2019, but 2019. yes. Yeah. And I think you launched officially in 2020, if I'm not mistaken, I was reading something. So 2019. Yeah. Came yeah, into so life. we're fairly new. We're fairly right. new. Yeah. It's so you, you could have picked a more opportune time when the world is going through all this tumultuous change to be part of the change in the conversation. And I, I just want to clarify a couple of things for, for, for the listeners here. When someone interacts with awareness ties, I think it's important to know, first of all, the, the logo and the idea of the tie. So you've got to write the, the, the graphic image of a tie and the circle and coming together all pointed towards the center. I'm going to go there in a sec, but I'm thinking as a user, as someone who's not familiar with your organization, becoming familiar with it, I'm not just going to muscular dystrophy and learning about muscular dystrophy. I'm not just going to a website on LGBTQ uh, rights and learning about them. I'm not just going to uh, a Black Lives Movement page and reading or interacting. I'm coming to a central gateway, as you put it, to become aware. You're not necessarily saying you have all the answers or all the information about uh, funding or so forth. You're saying, look, our goal is to give voice to the voiceless and to provide a central way. And for you, dear user, person who's going to interact with us, we want you to learn about the other important causes. Because, you know, I could have, you're saying, Jack has eight, you've got six or seven. Maybe I've got three that are really dear and near to my heart. But if I want to be a person who truly practices inclusion, is truly interested in the diversity that's around us, I need to be aware of all, I mean, there's over 2,800 living languages today. Most of us speak just English, right? So how do we become more aware of the diversity that is around us to embrace it? And, you know, so I, that's why I think it's important. I wanted to go there and say, having a gateway where people can become more aware is critical. It's crucial, especially today, especially as we're moving to a virtual platform and you're taking us there with awareness thoughts in the near future. But how does a cause become a cause that you align with? Can you share some of that with us? You know, we started out with, with, 12 originally and then that grew to 15 we tend to bring on causes in sets of three it seems i don't know that we're only going to have 22 for the, the rest of our days we'll probably include a number of others um the one thing you need to know about awareness ties is that it's all very organic and so every cause we've brought on every organization that we've included in this every ambassador because for every cause we have an ambassador that shares their story and serves as as the face of, of that particular cause um, has happened in a very organic way so um, you know we started out with this original collection of causes and the collection has just grown and grown as there has been a demand, as there's been an interest, um, as Jack and I have been personally interested. Um, so we've just allowed it to sort of grow itself and we've just sort of paid attention to um, the needs that we were hearing and beginning to address and um, that number will probably continue to grow. That, that's good, we, we want that awareness. You know, two years ago when I stood uh, uh, on the TEDx stage and I spoke at um, Traverse City, I spoke about racism, I spoke about um, my experience with being marginalized as a Muslim. Uh, it was a very personal talk, but that doesn't mean that other people who come from a marginalized community have been othered throughout their life, have felt racism and discrimination, 
don't go through the same. So it resonates. So, you know, maybe people in the audience, it was a fairly white audience, northern small city in, you know, small city in northern Michigan, but very, very enlightened group of people. I, I love, they became a second family in Traverse City. But it, it was very much a white audience. Mm -hmm. FedEx audience tends to be, they're very educated and enlightened and they always have the opportunity to learn more because they want to learn more. And that's what you're doing too, is, is you're bringing those stories and you're giving them focus and you're asking people to listen and to learn and to love. And I think that, mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're bringing the voice of those ambassadors and, you know, inclusion is where the dominant culture organically expands to allow the circle of safety to encourage right. that have been externalized to become part of the safety, circle of safety. Our circle of safety starts here and the most safe part is right in the center. We need to allow those other voices to become part of the discussion organically, not because we are, you know, somehow holding the, 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 the entrance way, but when their voices become heard, that circle of safety expands and those voices become part of that fabric. And then that becomes a lot more, we become more aware of that diversity. And again, that's what I yes. thought when I visited your website yesterday. Am, am I right? Is, is this what your intention experience? Well, yeah, and, and you, you, you nailed it right there because, you know, inclusion has to be a result of an invitation, not as an official mandate. Um, it's something where we have to extend an invitation to, to open to, it, it's something that has to be allowed. It cannot be forced. And, you know, when you say you went to Traverse City and, you know, a very white community, um, you know, this is where, I'm going to tell you a funny story. I grew up in an all-white community. And there was a community next door that um, had a fair number of, of blacks there. And um, so they decided in this other community next door that they were going to have diversity day and they were going to open it up to all the other neighborhood commu uh, neighboring communities. And so they came to me in my school and they said, hey, would you like to come to diversity day? Um, you know, being like the only black girl in this whole school, would you like to come to diversity days? And, you know, I said, you, guys, you, you got it kind of wrong. You got it kind of mixed up. Let's gather all the people who are different and bring them together for diversity day. And let's exclude everyone else. They missed the point. So you going to an all white community to share your experience, to share your stories, because that's what it takes. It takes an introduction of something that's different to be able to create that change, to be able to present this other perspective Jack and I believe that it is perspective that is so powerful. And if we can allow someone to look through a different lens, to see something in a different way, you know, that's our job. And that's what's going to make the change. It's not preaching to the choir. They don't need to be preached to, you know? Um, it's, it's going outside of your comfort zone. It's going outside of your knowns and finding um, this different space and in raising your voice there, because that's where it's needed. That's where it needs to be heard. And, and once we're there, however intentional the others are in allowing us to become or per, al allowing for the discussions, putting down their guard, uh, dis disinvesting themselves of, of ignorance that can either lead to fear or to hatred, but just allowing themselves to be naturally loving that allows us to feel like we belong. So they can't make us feel belong. They can work really hard to be more inclusive, but only we can choose to feel like we belong. And we can't belong if we don't feel that we're part of the conversation and that we're included. And that kind of brings me to, to, to my next question to you. There's got to be a personal connection there. There's got to be a personal story why you and Jack were inspired to do this. And mm -hmm. I was just sitting around one day and said, hey, let's create a, awareness guys like what personal story yeah. inspired that you just shared sure. black i wouldn't have guessed that for making me aware is that part of the story um i suppose it is it's probably the subconscious part of the story uh the story really began when we were um in la we were conducting uh we're working on an event 
um, at Paramount Studios actually are working with the Hollywood Film Festival at the time and we're concepting this event called the Gold Tie Awards where we would, instead of a black tie event, we'd have a gold tie event um, that we want to use this gold tie to represent the gold standard that social impact filmmakers can make in the industry. And, you know, so the idea, the concept was so well received, everyone loved the idea. And so, you know, on the trip back to the Midwest, you know, uh, several hours later, we had our epiphany, we had our aha moment. Um, we said, you know what? It's not about just a gold tie to represent social impact filmmaking. Um, what if we used a tie as a symbol for a number of other causes. It's not just this cause that we can represent with this tie. What if we used it as a symbol for cancer awareness, for domestic violence, for Alzheimer's, for all of these causes that um, Jack and I held so near and dear? People are already very familiar with awareness ribbons. The methodology is already there. People are comfortable, they get it, they understand it. We're not reinventing the wheel here. Um, what we're gonna do instead is just make it more visible. And so we said, what are we gonna do? Let's, let's use these ties. And so that's where the name awareness ties came from. And it started out with that, um, that symbol that symbol to serve as both a statement and then also as a conversation starter. You see someone walking around with a bright orange tie, he's like, oh, what's that about? Well, you know, so funny story, not so funny. I actually was just diagnosed with MS and this orange tie shows my support. It is my symbol of support for this cause, you know? And so that is what um, it would, uh, that's where the conversation began, was using these ties as a symbol of support. And um, after we developed this uh, concept of using a tie as a physical symbol um, of support, we said, well, let's follow that though. Let's not just have ties as symbols of support. Let's use these, um, let's create other ties. I'm tied to this cause with this content. Um, you know, and so we developed the, the magazine, the, um, the resource guides, the whole platform was really developed outside of that, but it began with just a tie to serve as a symbol. And um, now pre-COVID, uh, that was going to be our primary focus, was this, this tie, this symbol. And we were going to use that uh, to use as a fundraiser, where you'd be able to go to an event and you could... Um, you know, purchase this tie and the proceeds would go to, to fund the organization that we'd be partnering with or go into schools and the schools, as opposed to selling, you know, candy and chocolates that are just going to rot your teeth anyway, why not sell this symbol of support and have all the kids wearing these ties to, I in a unified it. way, support love the it. cause, right? And so that's still on the docket, but because of COVID, we had to pivot as everybody has. And our pivot was just to focus on the conversation We'll get back to the actual ties that you wear, but right now it's the words that we share. And Hello. so right now we're focused on the content. Ali, what you're doing now is you're focusing on raising awareness. I mean, I got to know about you because of Mary Henderson and her magazine, and I read about it, and I was inspired. And I'm like, wait a minute, I need to learn. So I, I, COVID is happening for a reason. We could choose to add to it upon and you know what you're doing is saying okay i get it COVID's happening but life won't stop and raising awareness right. and knitting us together it. through awareness isn't going to stop so how do we use that word how do we pivot how do we how do we the world just differently because we are going to come back into these social spaces and this is going to cause us to be more responsible more aware more committed right and that time that we yeah. and celebrate right in the physical space it's going to have such a much louder resonance with mm -hmm. seeing that bright orange tie or whatever color and say, there's a story there, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You know, you're being a great role model for your six children. You're being a great role model for the ambassadors and a great ally. And I think it comes to this, you know, conversation about allyship, right? Yes, um, absolutely. I intend to all know or feel i don't know what it's like to be black i don't know what it's like to be lgbtq i don't know what it's like to be white i don't even know what it's like to be a female muslim i know what it's like to be me the only mm -hmm. thing it's like to be something or someone else is to step out of my fear to go beyond yes. 
comfort. And sometimes I think it's comfort and then fear. I think, you know, I'm going to start really looking at this and challenge that it's first our fear zone and mm-hmm. then it's our comfort zone. I've always had it, you know, they, they talk about you getting your comfort zone, then you move into your fear, <laughs> and then into your growth. I think we all start from a place of fear. We start mm. with unknown and ignorance, and that leads us to comfort and ignorance, and just mm-hmm. control, or it takes us into um, hatred and discrimination. Right? To say on mm-hmm. right? And yeah. so I think we start from fear, but the other side of fear is love. So if we can quickly pivot, to love, mm-hmm. we know that we're going to go to a better, more inclusive place. And, you know, your, your story is inspiring. You've, it's even personalized. I'm glad you decided to share that, you know, you've been recently diagnosed with multiple, multiple sclerosis, MS. Yeah. And, and I'm sending you blessings and positive energy for- Thank you. Right? Um, but you manifest what you preach or not, not, sorry, not preach. You manifest what you talk about and what you share. Um, well, and it's, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's finding what you, it's, you find what you seek, I think at the end of the day. Mm. And so when diagnosed with MS, I mean, that's, a, that's a thing, right? When diagnosed with MS, um, I had a choice. I could sit there and be sad and be scared, or I could say, I'm going to use this. And so how can I use this? How can I find the win? It's, it's see, you find what you seek. And I wanted to find a win. And it wasn't just a win for me. I wanted to find a win um, for something bigger than me. And so I said, okay, if I'm going to be diagnosed with MS, I'm, um, I'm going to use that to benefit others. And so the win I found in that was to be able to say, um, you know, so trying to just give some thought about that. Like, how can I find a win? How can I make this? Someone gets diagnosed with it. And I was like, where's the win? And I said, but this gives me an opportunity to see through a different lens. So through the power of that perspective, there's a win to be found. And so I found it by saying, not only um, am I going to be the founder of this company, but I'm also going to be an ambassador. I'm going to be the official ambassador for multiple sclerosis awareness. And so that was, um, that was the decision. That was the win. It was finding the win, you know? And uh, so I, I think it's, it's one of those situations where, you know, when you look at like the, the back in the day, there was a, the hair club for men. I'm not just the president, I'm a member. And so, you know, here I can say, hey, you know, not, yeah. I'm not just the founder, I'm, I'm an ambassador as well. And so Jack and I truly live and breathe awareness ties Um, the, we do believe that through diversity, we can construct, um, our, our unity. So unity in diversity is what we believe in. And that's why we've created a multi-cause platform, probably the first of its kind. Um, and that's why we're all in, uh, to create some really positive social change that's sustainable because of the content that we produce and the conversations that we curate, we're inspired and passioned to, um, to do these things. And we look to inspire others to do that as well. And it's contagious and you're creating a ripple effect, you know, and you know, the more you tell your story and I'm very honored to have shared your story here, you know, people say to me, okay, what is your podcast about unfiltered leaders, right? Is, <laughs> wait a minute, this story isn't about somebody in a corner becoming a better people leader. This is about right. who's making a change in the community becoming a better person themselves so that they can become a stronger, more resilient person who can inspire others to be better, right? And this is right. to the point of the podcast, because I could talk to you for hours and, and, <laughs> and I hope that we have future opportunities to connect. But I would like to ask you, if you could give one, if you could share one piece of enlightenment, whether you want to call it advice, enlightenment, uh, nugget of wisdom with the listeners, I call it the unfold. Mm-hmm. What would your piece of enlightenment be? What would you tell them to help them become a better person, stronger, more resilient self? Mm -hmm. You know, I think um, actually very much aligned with the name of what you've got going on there. It would be to remove the filter. Jack and I, with what we've produced, is a very unfiltered concept. It's one that is rooted in authenticity and integrity and um, in doing so, I think we have found empowerment there that is um, unquestionable and undeniable. 
Um, I think that in removing the filter, um, you're able to reach so many more um, just by being authentic and being original. And the only way to do that is to remove that, that filter and just to be raw and to be real. And uh, so that's, that's the advice that I think Jack and I would like to share with everyone. Thank you. And I can't tell you how touched I am that you really shared your raw and authentic and down to earth unfiltered self. Sending all the blessings to you, your children and to Jack. And this is just the start of a relationship. So I look forward to continued conversation. Uh, okay. It's part of the awareness that you're tying us together with and mm -hmm. uh, to become an ally. So thank you very much. And I wish you all the best. Thank you for being my unfolded guest today. All the best. Thank you so much for the time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Unfiltered, the show about authentic leadership and personal growth. Like what you heard? Click subscribe, share it, and tell a friend about it. And don't forget to leave a rating.